You said there were a lot of myths. Yes, and rumors. Yeah. What are the myths? I would probably say like the drug myths. Like a lot of people say he was using took, um, which is uh, akin to ice, I think. Meth. Yes. Um, it's not true at all. <laughs> no, he's not a drug taker. No, he's not. Did he watch an axe murdering documentary? No, we thought on his, the night. No, we thought someone else may have when we saw the evidence at first. But then when it got explained to us, it was just that it was on the schedule. It was just one of the scheduled programs on TV at the time that the TV was switched on. That night they watched Star Trek. Other myths that he had a brain tumor. Oh no, he his friend was doing a study, and I think it was a neurology study. I'm not quite sure. I think it might have been even on depression, but he just got a brain scan taken for that, and they did find a little something on the scan, and they detected that it was just a little water cyst or something like that. It was nothing dangerous at all. Of all the myths, what irritated you and Henry most? I would say f for me it was uh, saying that he was emotionless. Um, even though that was also raised in court, um, to me a lot of people did show display emotion a lot differently to others. I mean, if you look at the previous cases like Oscar Pistorius, if he doesn't cry, he's also emotionless, and if he does cry, he's just putting on an act. So and he had that in the back of his mind quite pretty much the whole time. So he was just trying really hard to not show any emotion so that there's nothing for anyone to work with, except that became something for people to work with as being emotionless. And I don't think that's fair at all because they don't know him. Like, I can see him. He's trying so hard to hold back his tears. You know, he's trying so hard to hold back how he feels about some things in certain parts of the case where it's very visible in his face. Much was made of Henry seemingly falling asleep in the court. Yeah. When the verdict was coming down. Yeah, I gave him a sleeping pill because the previous nights he'd been struggling to sleep a little bit, the previous two nights. So we just hoped that he would have a proper sleep so that he'd be awake in court. He only went to sleep at four in the morning and he woke up at six, went to court. And I think this, the sleeping pill was still in the system because he was extremely tired. He tried really hard to just stay awake, but he absolutely couldn't. He was fighting to try and stay awake, but I don't think that was at all in his hands, like whether he could stay awake at that stage or not. What disturbs you most about this case? Probably the emergency call. It frustrated me, it frustrated everyone hearing it saying that she was not responsive, but he never quite knew the reason. So going to court and actually finding out that she thought it was a prank call did hit us really hard, that that is why um, she was neglecting to actually just give him the attention that he, they needed immediately. And also making him reenact. Um, the fight with the ax was a very, very shocking to me. Do you think he will ever be free? Yes, I'm confident in the appeal. What makes you so confident? I trust his lawyers. They have been really great and they've always been lovely people actually, besides just their professionalism. Um, I do believe in them and I do believe that there's not enough evidence actually in the case. This is a gross miscarriage of justice. In my opinion, yes, definitely.